Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all had a wonderful day. Today's video is my reading wrap up for January. Um, so in January, I started my new TBR game, which is Cards of TBR, in which I use a deck of cards to help me pick the books I'm going to read. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. I have just um, uploaded my February TBR. So if you want to see what I will be reading this month, then definitely check that one out. Um, but for now, I am just going to go through all the books I read in January, what I thought of them, what star rating I gave, um, and yeah, let's get into it. So in January, um, my TBR was actually to read six books, including my buddy read, um, and I actually read nine, which I'm pretty impressed with, to be fair. Um, so I'm going to go through the ones that weren't on my TBR first, and then we'll crack onto the ones that were. Um, so the first one, was The Christmas Killer by Alex Pine. Um, I actually read this um, towards the end of December and finished it in January, so that is why it is on this TBR. Um, but basically it follows a detective who moves to a Cumbrian village um, and a murder happens and he receives a note to say that there will be 11 more um, inside a 12 days of Christmas Christmas card. So yes, is the Christmas killer. Um, I gave this book four stars. I thought it was absolutely amazing, actually. I really enjoyed it. Um, I even went online to see um, if I could get hold of any other Alex Pine books, and he's only actually written... Um, actually, I don't know if it's a he or a she. Um, no, it's a he. I was right. Um, yes, so he's only actually written two books, so I do hope to get my hands on the other one at some point, um, but I really liked it. I think I will probably read this one again. Um, I just enjoyed the way the characters kind of unfolded, the story unfolded, and the fact that I was never 100% sure who it was going to turn out to be. And then at the end, it was like, oh, I thought it could be him or her, but I wasn't sure. And yeah, it was just really exciting. So I won't obviously spoil the ending, but if Christmas and like thriller suspense is your kind of thing, then I definitely recommend checking out this book. So that, that one. Um, then next up, I read two Anne Cleves Vera books. So I have The Glass Room, which follows um, a lady who goes missing, and then they find her at a reader's house, which is basically where you go to read and write um, books and kind of develop your, yeah, writer skills I suppose and obviously a murder occurs and then the next one is The Seagull um, which begins with a ex-cop who is in prison and he gets in touch with Vera and, uh, and tells her that he will give her some information about a body if she looks out for his daughter um, and obviously she finds the body so stuff occurs. Um, but yeah I thought they were really good, I gave them three stars each um, and it's not because I didn't enjoy them, because I did, um, I just, they were kind of meh, like I enjoyed the story, but would I read it again? I'm not 100% sure. I really enjoy the TV series of Vera, I think they're really great, um, but yeah, the books were good, I just don't know if I'd reread them. So yeah, there's that. The only issue I do have with the Vera books is the descriptions of Vera. Um, so these were written in 2012, I think I looked up, um, and I just feel like the descriptions of her are quite unfair. Like, they describe her as sort of, like, fat and unattractive, and, um, just like, yeah, not nice to look at. And that makes me feel really sad. I feel like there could have been, like, a better description for her, um, or it could have been done in a different way. I just didn't like that and I feel like it's referred to a lot throughout the books when people view her. Um, yeah, it wasn't, I didn't like that element of the books but I did really enjoy the stories. Um, I just think that bit was, yeah, not for me. But yeah, I liked those, as I said, gave them three stars each. And then finally, the one that wasn't on my TBR is Val McDermid's Insidious Intent. So my mum actually gave this book to me last year um, it's over 500 pages, it's huge, um, and she actually bought it twice by accident, she didn't realise she'd already got it, um, so yes, this is book 10 in the series, I believe, um, of DCI Carol Jordan, um, so obviously I knew nothing about 
the inspector before reading this book. I didn't even know it was book 10 until I'd finished it. Um, but obviously I was aware that there were parts of the story um, of her background that I wasn't fully understanding. So when I got to the end and realised it was book 10, that made perfect sense. Um, but it follows um, a man who <laughs> arrives at weddings and um, finds lonely women and then he kills them, basically. Um, and I thought it was really good, but the ending for me, I did not like at all. Um, so I gave it three stars and I feel like it could have potentially got more had the ending gone in a different direction. Um, but because of the direction it went in, I didn't, I didn't like it. I felt like it was a really silly way to end a perfectly good story. Um, and the wrap up for it was just, yeah, not good. I did look it up on Goodreads and a lot of fans of this series actually said the same thing, that they really didn't enjoy the ending and felt like it had ruined it and things like that. Obviously, I haven't read any others, so I don't know if my impression would be different had I known more or less. But yeah, for me, the ending just fell a bit flat. So I probably wouldn't read this one again. Um, yeah, it was okay. So it was a long book and I wanted to get to the end. Um, right, now moving on to the ones that were on my TBR. So the first one I have is The Switch by Beth O'Leary. Um, so this one is about um, a granddaughter and her grandmother who switch lives for like two months. So Lena lives in London and she's a businesswoman and she gets given mandatory holiday for two months and um, she decides she's going to go and stay with her grandma, Eileen. Um, but Eileen is fancying a bit of a change. So she moves into Lena's flat in London. Um, and yeah, it's kind of about Lena getting used to doing something other than always being at the top and on a, in a rush and kind of getting used to village life. Um, whereas Eileen is kind of getting that rush being in London, meeting people um, and going out on dates and things. Um, and it, it was really good, but it did feel a little bit Cecilia O'Herney for me in the sense that not an awful lot happens. It is a bit of a day in the life kind of book, um, but I enjoyed it a lot more than Cecilia O'Hearn ones, I'm afraid. Um, but I think because I read The Flat Share last year and absolutely loved it, this one fell a little bit flat for me in that sense. Um, I just didn't feel like they were particularly on par. I know they're different books, but... I was hoping for a bit more romance, whereas this was more kind of family-based um, issues and that kind of thing with a little bit of romance chucked in. So I would reread it, but I just, yeah, I loved the flat share. What can I say? So yeah, I gave this one three stars. Uh, next up is Come A Little Closer by Karen Perry. Um, so this one is about a couple that move into the downstairs flat of a convicted killer and he has just got out of prison. So um, they move into the flat not knowing anything about the man upstairs and then it's kind of the story of um, meeting him and finding out about his past, whether he did kill his wife or whether he didn't kill his wife. Um, and I gave it three stars. Um, looking back, I feel... Like, I probably didn't even enjoy it as much as the three. I feel like I probably could have given it a two, looking back. Um, I'm not going to change it, because I gave it the rating that I gave at the time, um, when I was fresh out of reading it. But, yeah, I probably wouldn't read this again. I, I felt like it was all a bit weird and creepy, which I get that it's a domestic thriller, so it, it kind of should be. Um, but there were elements of it that I just didn't feel were necessary, and I didn't really... I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I did enjoy the ending. The ending was actually really good. I wasn't expecting it at all. And when the reveal happened, it was like, I had to pause for a moment and I was like, how did I not see that? Like, how did I not see that? Um, but yeah, there were parts of this book that I really liked and parts of it where I just kind of felt, I was like, what is happening right now? Um, so yeah, I only give it three stars um, and I will be decluttering this one. Uh, next up is My Buddy Read and it is Graceling by Kristen Cashaw and I read this one with um, Nikki 
Um, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I thought it was brilliant. I couldn't wait to start book two, which we are reading this month in February. TBR spoiler. Um, but it follows Katza, who is graced, which means she has an exceptional skill. Um, and in a world where people are graced, not everyone is. Um, but if you are born with a grace, you are a little bit kind of shunned and outcast because people aren't quite sure what to expect. Um, and she meets a mysterious stranger and then they go off on an adventure together. Um, and I loved it. I really, really loved it. Um, if you've read it, then Poe just, oh, he has my heart. I think he is fabulous. Um, yeah, I can't wait to read the second book. Um, yeah, I highly recommend reading it. I actually um, recommended it to a friend at work the other day and she has just started reading it. So yeah, it's a really good book if you're into that kind of fantasy with an element of romance. Um, yeah, it's really good. So there is that one. Next up is The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapina. Where do I start? I gave it one star. Um, yeah, I wasn't impressed. I, the most talked about thriller of the year, maybe. So it follows a couple who go to dinner next door and they leave their baby alone at home. Um, and they check on her every half an hour. So already I was a bit like, mm, I'm not liking where this is going to go. Um, and then when they return at the end of the evening, their baby is gone. Um, I was on board for quite a lot of this and I was kind of there with the twists and turns and when you find out what happens to the baby I was I was okay with that and then something else happens and something else happens and then the ending oh my the ending the ending is what gave it one star for me um I just felt it was completely unnecessary. Like, you could have ended it the chapter before. Putting that ending in ruined it. Um, I think it probably would have got a two, maybe a three star before that. So it's nothing, it's not a book that I really loved and really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, the ending ruined it. And I spoke to Nikki about it and she was like, mm, you know, I didn't want to tell you kind of about the ending. Um, but I think she only gave it two or three stars when she read it. Um, this might be your kind of book. Domestic thrillers, I think, aren't mine. Um, and I've come to realise that with reading a couple this month. They're just not my kind of cup of tea. Um, but this one took the biscuit. I can't wait to chuck it somewhere. I, I'm going to give it to a friend um, because she's asked if she can have it, which is totally fine. Um, but yeah, if I never saw this book again, I'd be quite happy. <laughs> Just, a, oh, I'm so upset. I hated it. Um, but if it's your kind of book and you really enjoyed it, then that's great. Um, it just really wasn't for me. Um, right, then next up, I have this one. It's The Death of a Hollow Man. Um, by Caroline Graham. It's a Midsummer Murders mystery, so it follows DCI Barnaby. Um, you might have seen, so I've got itchy nose, you might have seen the TV program that used to be on ITV. Um, I didn't finish it, I DNF'd it. So it's only 300 pages. I got 200 in and just couldn't do it, if I'm honest. Um, so it follows DCI Barnaby, um, but it the story starts with an amateur dramatic society creating a play of Amadeus and you meet every character and find out every detail about every character before the murder even happens. Um, so the murder happens on page 150. Um, so it's the midpoint of the book. And I think having watched a lot of the TV series and knowing the murder happens exactly at the beginning and then from there you meet the rest of the people involved, I found it a struggle that the murder didn't occur quite quickly. And then when I got past page 50 and there was still no murder, and then past page 100 and there was still no murder, and then we hit page 150 and I was like, okay, finally we're here. 
it then went back to going back to all the characters and how they felt about the murder. And it was just a bit much. I just wasn't enjoying it. And I felt like I had such a big reading slump towards the end of last year that I didn't want to put myself into another one trying to finish this. I know I only had 100 pages left. Um, and I have kept um, a note of the book page I was on. So if I choose to return to it at some point, then I can. It will just go back on my shelf for now. Um, I was really sad I wasn't able to finish it. But every time I picked this book up, I just felt so... Ugh, at the thought of having to read it, that I only read about 10 pages at a time. So it was it was really hard work. And... Normally books like this I absolutely love and adore. The first book I really enjoyed. So to not enjoy the second book was a bit upsetting, I suppose. But yeah, it's just going to stay on the shelf. I'm not going to worry about it. It is what it is. And then the final book I read is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Um, so Nikki bought me this maybe last year or the year before. Um, and I'd been putting off reading it because there had been such a big hype about it that I thought I probably would enjoy it, but the amount of series that I have going on up here is ridiculous. Um, and then this year, I was like, no, I want to read it. I'm putting it on my January TBR. And I loved it. I gave it five stars. I thought it was incredible. Um, I I got to like, where did I get to? Maybe it's, it's over 400 pages, this book. I reckon I got to maybe 300 and part of me didn't want to pick it up anymore because I was so worried about how it was going to end and I didn't want to deal with the emotional stress of it. Um, and I didn't pick it up for a few days because I was like, I just don't know if I can cope with the ending not going how I want it to. Um, and then I was like, no, just pick it up. You need to get on with it. So I finished it and I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to start book two. Um, it's amazing. Um, so it follows Feyre, who is a human, and she kills a wolf and then has to be taken back to the fairy realm to kind of live out her days there as part of her punishment for killing a fairy wolf. Um, and yeah, it's just great. Like, my explanation is absolutely rubbish. Um, just read it. I have no other way to tell you. Just, just read it if you haven't yet. If you're into like fantasy romance, um, you like the fairy element, then this is going to be for you. I loved it. Um, I thought it was great. So yeah, I read nine books this month. Shocked and stunned is not the word. Um, obviously, my plan for the year is to read five a month to reach my 60 book goal. Um, but obviously if I read over that, then that's fabulous. Um, and then obviously my buddy reads count as an extra. But I'm so chuffed that I managed to read nine this month and get a few off my shelves as well. Um, so if you watched my no buy video, then you will have seen that I am doing a bit of a book buying ban in the sense that I have to gain points through reading books off my shelves in order to purchase new books. Um, so... I don't know if I did a video on it. I don't know if I did a video on my points. Let me know. If you would like to know how my how I have worked out my point system, it's very similar to Nikki's, actually. So you might want to head over to her channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, and you can check out how she does her point system, because mine is effectively the same. Um, and it was created by the lovely Karen. Um, she isn't on YouTube, um, but it was her idea to create this kind of book buying point system. So thank you, Karen, for letting us use it. Um, and it's just a really great fun way to kind of accumulate points for buying books. Um, so I added up all my points from the nine books I read and I managed to get 380 points this month, um, which I think is pretty good. So um, I'm allowed to purchase a new book if I gain 200 points. So obviously at the at this point in time with 380 I have gained one book credit um, and then I have 180 points that I will just roll over into the following month to continue 
adding on. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how this month's reading went. Um, there were a couple of flops, as I say, with my one star book and my DNF. Um, but all in all, I think I had a really good reading month and I've really enjoyed some of the books I've read. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you've read any of them or you have any thoughts, um, let me know in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's everything from me. Don't forget to head over and check out my February TBR video to see what I'll be reading in Feb. Um, yeah, that's everything from me. Take care and I'll see you soon.